Hey, this is Mike from the Run Testers, and this is our multi-tester review of the Garmin Forerunner 165. So here's those key Garmin Forerunner 165 details. It comes in two versions, a standard and music version, which adds Wi-Fi and a four gigabyte music player. The standard Forerunner 165 costs £249 in the UK, or $249 in the US, and the music version is priced at $289.99 in the UK, or $299.99 in the US. That means it's priced within the 455, around the same price as the Garmin Viva Active 5, and cheaper than the 455, as well as the more expensive 465. It weighs 39 grams, comes in one 43 millimeter case size option, which makes it smaller than the 465, and a similar size to the Vivo Active 5. It has five physical buttons, a 1.2 inch 390 by 390 resolution touchscreen, and is paired with a removable 20 millimeter silicon strap. Features wise, it uses a multi GNSS GPS setup, so not the latest Garmin multiband support. It uses Garmin's fourth generation optical heart rate sensor as opposed to the newer generation 5 one, and does offer blood oxygen saturation monitoring. It works with Garmin Coach, gives you access to Garmin's Pace Pro pacing strategies, lets you build running workouts and view race predictions. While you can use it for interval training, it does lack Garmin's more advanced interval training support. It doesn't offer full mapping support, it does offer point-to-point -point navigation and the ability to follow breadcrumb trails on the screen. In terms of key training insights, it offers training effect, HRV status, recovery recommendations, but doesn't have the new training readiness metric. Smartwatch features include the ability to view notifications, Garmin Connect IQ store access, the ability to access Garmin's morning reports and music playback controls for the standard version with the added music player on the music model. The battery numbers are that it can last up to 11 days in smartwatch mode according to Garmin and the 19 hours GPS only battery life and up to 7 hours with GPS and music streaming for the music model. So like for me on the Forerunner 165, start with the screen. It's a really nice design all round, I'd say. It's a lightweight watch, nice bright screen, really responsive to touches. Like there are brands that have made much more expensive AMOLED touchscreen watches than this that aren't anywhere near as responsive as snappy as the one on the 165. It, it does deliver the same kind of experience you get from Garmin's more expensive AMOLED watches at a lower price point. And that's really the key here. Like it's an AMOLED watch at a lower price and it is a really nice screen. It delivers on that front. It's bright to read in all conditions, even when you're outside in the sun. And it's a step up on memory and pixel displays when you're indoors or under cloud cover it's a lot brighter and easier to read i find and just more enjoyable to interact with and considering the screen i was also quite impressed by the battery life on the watch you know, it's lasted four or five days on a charge quite reliably and for a quite a small watch with a big bright screen like this i think that's good like in the past we were worried about amoled watches and sports watches bringing them down to kind of smart watch levels of battery like the apple watch that like lasting one or two days max but actually the battery life and the screen technology is now there that even with a small watch like this with a bright display which i had always on throughout my testing you're still going to get several days of battery life and not have to worry about finding the charger every couple of days there is also the option to turn the screen to raised awake and that will really bump up the battery life to over a week so the battery life actually overall is a plus here whereas normally you might fear it would be a negative with an amoled watch and the thing i like i suppose about the watch in general is for me it does feel very much like a successor to the a four and a two four five within garmin's range which is a watch really aimed at runners it hasn't got multi-sport features it doesn't have cycling power support and stuff like that but it is a really good watch that offers useful extra features to runners on top of very good basic tracking so the key running features on the watch are really good i found that the uh, gps accuracy has been comparable to that of a multi-band watch in most situations you get a little uptick in accuracy by getting a multi-band watch something like the chorus pace 3 or garmin's multi-band watches but overall it's certainly good enough on the 165 with the all systems mode you've got the structured workout support really clear data screens all that kind of stuff that garmin does really well and then you've got breadcrumb navigation and music storage as useful extras on the 165 music obviously that do set it apart a little bit from other watches because no one's really doing music as well as Garmin in the sports watch world and their breadcrumb routing with turn by turn navigation is really solid as well. So yeah, it's a nice little package that I think offers a lot to runners, uh, if not so much to other athletes. The first thing I would say that's really stood out for me has been the battery life because ultimately that is my biggest concern when you've got a watch with an AMOLED display. I know that it will drain the battery quicker than kind of traditional kind of older generation kind of display technologies. So that was my big thing here. Now, I've got nowhere near to the kind of stated 11 days in smartwatch mode. That doesn't really factor in the kind of regular use of kind of features like GPS tracking, uh, notifications, kind of music stream, all the things that I have used and do use during my time with this watch. Now, in terms of my experience, what I've seen is it's closer to kind of four to five days. And that's with kind of 
training or tracking something or an activity for an hour i think generally four to five days is how regularly you're going to have to be charging this watch if you are tracking with it as well now that is mainly been with the kind of raise to weight gesture support which generally that's what i would use because i don't necessarily need the always on display at all times now if you do have the always on display it's generally going to be or what i found it's been close to kind of two two days so a couple of days compared to kind of five days so it's still pretty good but ultimately you're going to be charging it more frequently another thing i think it's worth mentioning is the charging time or the charging speed that this watch charges up is very quick and it's a bit like what i've seen on kind of other garmin amoled watches where i feel like garmin has tried to make sure that these are watches while they're going to you're going to have to charge them more regularly they are going to charge quicker than kind of its more traditional display kind of packing watches the other thing i would say is now, I was a bit disappointed it doesn't have dual band GPS or the multi band GPS that kind of Garmin calls it or refers to it as. What I found in my test, it's generally been actually pretty good. And I've been using it against the multi band mode on Garmin's Rhino 965. I've also been using it against the dual band mode on the Coros Pace 3. And generally, the GPS has kind of matched up on most runs. The longer runs, the shorter runs, it's generally been fine. There's been a disparity in distance tracking, but it's not been by an amount that I would be concerned about and you kind of look at the mapped routes and there's some differences there but ultimately i've been pretty satisfied with the gps kind of performance overall and the last thing i'd say is and i've kind of mentioned it you know i do use the features outside of run tracking so things like notifications the kind of music streaming um if i'm at the track i will use the uh, music player and i can plug in my airpods and you know i don't have to what you know i have music when i'm doing a track session so it's quite a nice feature to have now I think those features are enough for me in terms of smartwatch features, you know, notifications, music, kind of weather reports, the kind of morning report I quite like as well too. And I think, you know, as a combination of running features and smartwatch features, I think it's a good package. And if that's something you are looking for, plus that kind of AMOLED display that you're getting here as well too, and touchscreen, it just makes it a nice experience to use outside of run tracking. So then the first of my likes is a neat and compact design that you get here. The AMOLED display is obviously the hero when it comes to the 165 and it's really great. It's nice and bright. It's a big step on from what we've been used to in most kind of running watches, running watch land. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't sacrifice a small toe for it, but it does make your stats look nice and shiny and it's a joy to interact with. The design overall here though and build are pretty basic in terms of materials, but that makes the watch nice and light and comfortable. There's a nice compact disappearing feel to it on the wrist overall. And if you're not a fan of bulky watches, this will appeal for sure. The strap is also nice and fuss free. It's easy to get a good fit. It feels strong and robust. Love the fact that you can swap it out. Screen real estate is ample, even though it's a smaller display. The touchscreen and buttons are snappy and responsive. And I really enjoy the level of customization that Garmin now offers from your run data screens to your glances. You can tweak a lot of the fine details here to set the watch up to match your needs. That's really, really handy. Now, my second big tick for the 165 is accuracy. In my tests, I found the GPS and the heart rate to be nicely accurate. I've done a lot of testing up against the multi-band GPS on the 265 and the 965. I've also done it against the Enduro 2, much pricier. And on the GPS front, it really holds its own when you dig into the tracks. There are occasions where 165 deviates slightly, but largely it clocks total distances well within margin for error against those devices and there isn't that much deviation on the tracks even in more testing conditions of the Barcelona half marathon and the London winter 10k which takes you through the built-up city of London when it comes to optical heart rate performance Garmin's Elevate V4 sensor has been pretty reliable for me across steady runs and interval sessions it's tracked nicely against the other optical sensor for the price of your 4Runners and it's not been too shabby up against the Polar H10 chest strap as well it's not infallible but as optical heart rate goes it's been solid and it's been a decent match for those more expensive garments as reliable i think as you're going to get on those final positive for me is on that breadth of features there are some emissions on the 165 there's no training status no training load no training readiness but that's unreliable unscientific governs anyway so don't worry about that no dual band gps and if you want things like lactate threshold estimates you need to upgrade but on the whole Garmin has crammed a lot into the Forerunner 165, particularly all the stuff that you want when you're actually running. Most of what you need to run casually or train and race up to a marathon is catered for here. There's plenty of support if you're new to running from features like suggested workouts, Garmin coach, adaptive training plans, and recovery time recommendations. All of that stuff is here. So in terms of running, when you're moving, the performance is quite similar to what you'll get higher up. So this is a pretty fully featured watch and that's a big tip.
So negatives to me on the watch, uh, would one would be the heart rate accuracy. Now we talk about this a lot with watches, but I was thinking it would be quite good with the 165 because it is quite a small lightweight watch. I tend to find with Garmin's that means they're a bit more accurate than some of the big heavier watches, but Garmin didn't put its latest heart rate sensor on this watch and it was pretty poor for me throughout my testing, like frequently just reading way too high or jumping up and down throughout workouts on 120 mile or just locked into my cadence for the entire time. So my heart rate was way out of whack. You know, it's going to be up and down for different people. In warm conditions, it'll probably be a little bit better, but, you know, the heart rate accuracy isn't great here. Something we say a lot with watches, I think you need to pair an external strap if you're going to use the fairly limited training analysis on the watch. You know, Garmin has added some training analysis to this watch as a feature, and to get the best from that, I think you're going to need an external sensor because the heart rate accuracy will skew it quite a lot if you're going to look at things like the anaerobic or aerobic effect of your workout. It is a negative for people in general, not so, not so much for me because I'm not a triathlete, but, you know, Garmin hasn't given it multi-sport mode and cycling power support it's separating it out from watches like the 255 and 265 on that front it's a kind of classic garmin tick box exercise where they basically work out what features to give to watches at certain prices to try and push people towards different ones but it's a bit of a shame other brands are just giving you multi-sport uh, modes at this price things like the chorus pace 3 so it's a shame it's not on there and though i talked about my GP the gps accuracy being good in my like section it is still a negative and a shame for me that the multi-band isn't on this watch it is on the 400 255 which is a similar price point the 265 obviously has it as a much higher price point but I know it doesn't feel like something that would force people to upgrade within Garmin's range and I think it would be a nice thing to have on this watch especially when you are competing against other brands like Coros who have the Pace 3 with dual band uh, GPS on there you know it feels like something that could be on there obviously it is a drain on battery life but it's very easy to switch between modes and the battery life is pretty good on this watch like I said in the like section so yeah certainly a shame you haven't got the dual band GPS I think for most people it won't be a deal breaker for me it's a really important feature on uh, Garmin watches because their dual band GPS is so accurate so it's a shame it didn't just sneak on to the 165. Okay, so into the three things that maybe I would say probably disappointed me most about the Garmin 4165 and my time with it. I think the first thing would be the kind of training insights and the training um, kind of analytics you're getting on this watch. Now, I totally understand what Garmin has done here and it's kind of paired things back. It's not giving you everything you would get on a 4965. And that totally makes sense for the, I think the type of person that's probably going to be looking at this watch. But I'm a little bit disappointed to see that training readiness hasn't made this or made it into this watch. And I know this hasn't been a, we haven't seen it on the kind of cheaper, more affordable end of kind of Garmin's range. But I feel like, you know, if ever that metric, and it's a metric, you know, there to kind of guide you, not be definitive kind of advice, but guide you in terms of maybe whether you should be doing a, a tough training day or whether you should kind of take a day off or kind of think about what you're going to do. It feels like it would make most sense on a watch like this. You know, it is kind of for those beginner runners who are maybe picking up a watch for the first time. And I feel like it's, I'm a bit disappointed it's not there when you've got something like HRV status, which fuels that kind of feature. But ultimately, in isolation, I don't think it's as easy to get to grips with if you are kind of you know, starting to look at that kind of aspect of your running and tracking your runs, ultimately. The other thing I would say is, while the GPS performance has been very good for me overall, I think, you know, the fact that it hasn't got dual band GPS here is a bit of a disappointment, particularly when you look that, that you can get dual band GPS and very good versions of it for less money than this from other brands, namely the Coros Pace 3. And I think, you know, it's a shame that that hasn't been added to this watch. I mean, you're going to have to go up, you know, not buy a massive amount, but things like the 255 do offer it. So, you know, you can spend a little bit of money for that dual band GPS support. And I think the other thing here for me as well, is this kind of the, the difference between the, the standard and the kind of music versions and the pricing of those two versions. Because ultimately, if you look at Garmin's range, it's where things get start to get a little bit congested. You could look at something like the Garmin Vivo Active 5, which essentially matches a lot of the features that you're getting here on the 165. But if you're paying, you're ultimately paying maybe £10 more for that music coming or music player coming as standard, whereas you've got to pay extra for it on the 165. And I think when you look at the feature sets, and there's there's, there's a few things maybe that you're you're lacking on the Vivo Active 5 from a running perspective that you are not getting on the 165. But I think there's things like kind of the more structured, more advanced interval training that you are getting the Vivo Active 5 that you're not getting on the 165. So again, it's that kind of disparity and those those features being saved and reserved for different watches where I think, yeah, the music element of me and having those two models, particularly when you look at where the Vivo Active 5 stands in the range, I'm a little bit disappointed that you're not getting that music feature as standard for that kind of cheaper price that the standard 165 is. So onto the things I was less convinced by. Now, while the AMOLED screen is very nice, you will pay for it in battery life. Battery life is shorter than you'll find on a 4 on a 55, on a 265, or a 255. 
and the Coros Pace 3. And personally, I found that I wanted more than the 165 offers. In my tests, I got between five and eight days of general training usage with around five to six hours of GPS runtime built in without using music. That was before I had to put it on charge. Twice, I had to charge it after just five days. And I'm not a particularly heavy user of the watch in between runs. I have notifications off, screen settings are tweaked to save power and those kind of things. Also, if you use that music function on this uh, 165 with music, you'll see it drain far, far quicker. A one hour run using music burned 14% on mine. Beyond that, without music, a one hour 25 marathon burned 11%. A four hour marathon burn 21%. So I'd say the claim 19 hour GPS runtime rings true and it might be enough for many runners, but I personally like a little more staying power. So next up for me is kind of price or value or kind of discerning which watch to buy. Before the 165 landed, we had the Forerunner 265 and Garmin pushed the price of that watch way up. The old 255 was 299 without music, 349 with. The new 265 obviously came with music, but for north of 400 pound. Now we've got the 4165 at 290 with music. It almost slots into the space that the 265 vacated. So is the 165 basically the 265 in all but name and the 265 device is like a new model in between the old 255 and the 965? Pfft, don't know. Garmin's lineup, I think it's getting harder to decipher for what represents good value and the features you might want or not want and what you're getting. I think there's two ways of looking at this though. If you're not bothered by the bright screen and the music, you might be better off looking at the Forerunner 255. It packs a much better battery life. You get dual band GPS and you can find deals on that watch. You'll also get more post-run training insights. So overall that makes the 165 look like less value. If you don't care so much about the post-run training insights or having a longer battery life, then during the run, the performance of the 165 is actually right up there with a the much pricier 4 Forerunner 265. So all of a sudden, based on performance just for that moment of running, this does actually look like good value. Now, if you're happy to look outside the Garmin stable, I think the Coros Pace 3 would be another really good alternative to look at here. Again, there's no AMOLED screen on that, but you do get dual band GPS, a much longer battery life, and it's got the same sort of almost lightweight, fuss-free design vibe going on with it too. The verdict is that the 165 is a really good option. It's probably the option that makes the most sense for most runners within Garmin's range if you do want that AMOLED screen, which I do think is an upgrade. Like, if you don't like those screens, that's perfectly fine. There are loads of watches out there that you can buy and make a bit of a saving by getting a non-AMOLED screen, and I think that will work for lots of runners as well. But I think the AMOLED here doesn't come at a huge cost, either in terms of price or battery life. So I do think it's a really nice feature to have on a watch, and it's probably the running watch I'd look at in Garmin's range if I was looking for a really well-rounded watch uh, that offers loads of features at a lower price point than some of the big hitters like like the 965 or the, even the 265s. When you're comparing it to the 265, you're going to get a reasonable upgrade there with dual band GPS and things like training readiness. I don't think it's an essential upgrade for most people unless obviously you're a triathlete and need that multi-sport mode. The 265 is a fantastic watch, but it is a lot more expensive than the 165. If I was a runner, I'd be looking at the 165 for sure. I just think you get enough here to really satisfy everything you're going to need. And then if you're a triathlete, you probably will have to look at upgrading. And then around the same kind of price, there are watches without AMOLED screens that are fantastic. The Chorus Pace 3, I still think is probably the best all-round value, you know, whatever you want to call it, watch for runners. You've got great battery life. You've got dual band GPS, which is more accurate than has been on Chorus watches in the past. I think it's a really accurate GPS watch. It's very lightweight, nice design. You know, it's a little bit cheaper. The extra features are kind of there. You get, you do get breadcrumb navigation. The music storage is a bit iffy the way Chorus does it because it's all drag and drop. But overall, the Chorus Pace 3 is... Probably the watch I'd lean towards buying myself if I was starting from scratch again now, just because it is such a well-rounded watch. You don't get the AMOLED screen, but I think the battery life and the dual-band GPS and the slightly lower price is a fair trade-off. So that's a really good watch to consider. And then the Garmin 4 and a 255, if you want to stay within Garmin's ecosystem, which obviously a lot of runners are already in, and it is very good. I think you get better music experience from that watch. You do get dual-band GPS, multi-sport modes and all that, and the 255 without the AMOLED screen. Like, you know, Non-AMOLED screens are still nice. I prefer an AMOLED screen, but it really depends on how much you're willing to pay extra for it. And that's a really good watch. People would rather have a triathlon mode and dual band GPS over the AMOLED screen on the 165 at around the same kind of price. So yeah, I think it's a nice addition to Garmin's lineup for sure. I do think it was needed. I think they needed something at the lower end because that's where Chorus in particular is putting out some very strong watches. It's not quite as cheap as I'd like it to be in the UK, but actually in the US, the price is really quite good. And like I said earlier, in my mind, it really does almost feel like a successor to the Forerunner 245, which was still the watch I was recommending to lots of runners who wanted the Garmin just because it does 
does such all the running stuff really well and it was so much cheaper than the newer models i think this is now a good price to give you a load of great running features a lovely screen a nice design and then some really useful extras like breadcrumb navigation and music which you know you'll know yourself if you're going to use a lot or not but i use navigation quite a lot i don't use music so much but i really like having it on my watch and it's all in a very attractive package works well yeah can't really fault it too much and it'll be a watch to look out for in sales because garmin watches always pop up in sales even in the year they were released so it will be an even better value option to runners uh, in those periods now before i get into the verdict some context from me my go-to watch is the garmin enduro 2 which is a big old rugged beast but i love the big screen real estate and the fact that you only have to charge it once a month is a win for me that staying power just really suits the way that i run and my running needs and my sort of slightly lazy personality really well but battery life aside i've really enjoyed using the 4Runner 165 with music it's been a refreshing to wear something that's more compact the tracks runs as effectively as the bulky more premium pricey devices and i think garmin has produced another very capable watch here that competes on reliability and for the bright screen it's standard solid garmin fair overall that ticks many of the right boxes and has condensed a lot of the best bits that you find on garmin's more premium watches into a simpler somewhat cheaper model also in that more compact package that some I think will enjoy. If you've been hankering after a bright crisp display but the 265 price has put you off this is definitely an option but it's not just about that bright screen it's backed up by a very reliable largely fully featured watch however if you can forego the AMOLED screen and the music the non-music 4 and a 255 might be a better value option. So my verdict on the Garmin 4165, I think overall my experience has been very good. I mean, I think the main thing, as I said, was, you know, would that AMOLED display massively impact on the kind of battery level that you would get on this watch compared to other watches around it? Now, you definitely can get or spend a little bit more and get a little bit more battery life. But I think ultimately for most people wanting something that can last a week's worth of training, this is going to be a watch that's going to serve you well. I think also things like GPS performance, I don't think you're massively missing out or most people won't massively miss out on that dual band GPS kind of support that you can, again, pay a little bit extra for things like the 255 and you can get that there as well. I think in terms of the core running features, the training insights and features you're getting here, the smartwatch um, features you're, you're getting here on the 165 as well, and that AMOLED display, it really kind of elevates how it is, what it's like to use as a running watch and as a smartwatch. I think as a package makes it a very affordable, good performing watch at a good price. I think ultimately it's going to be a watch that a lot of people are going to look at. The other side of it is you look at other watches that are out there that may be kind of offering a lot of what Garmin does minus the kind of AMOLED display, namely the Chorus Pace 3, which like the 4165 has that kind of breadcrumb navigation, has all the kind of running modes, kind of extra running analysis as well too, but does have that dual band GPS and it does perform very, very well. And you're getting very good battery life when you don't have that AMOLED display to have to think about powering as well. And then I think about, and I've kind of mentioned the Garmin Viva Active 5, which is slightly more expensive than the standard 165, and you're getting music, you are getting a kind of a kind of fancier bezel on there, you're getting kind of similar levels of battery life, you're getting the kind of more advanced interval training kind of mode there as well too, a little bit more on sleep uh, monitoring, a little bit more wellness monitoring, and those things that you care about, then it may be worth looking at the Vivo Active 5. I think if you've been looking at the 265 and the 965 and they felt a little bit too expensive for you, the main thing for me you are lacking from the 165 to the 265 really is that kind of dual band GPS support that you're missing out a little bit more on the training analysis side of things, which I think most people are probably going to live or be able to live without and maybe a little bit more batch life, but not a huge amount. And the 965 really is about that kind of extra mapping you get then. Again, you're getting the best of Garmin's features in terms of that training analysis and those kind of insights. So I think if you're looking for an affordable Garmin with an AMO display and you're looking for that strong performance, then this is absolutely worth looking at. I do think if you're looking at or looking for the best value running watch, I still feel like the Chorus Pace 3 is the best option if you can live without that AMOLED display. But if you want an AMOLED display with that kind of Garmin ecosystem, the best or, you know, as much of the kind of running smarts that you really kind of need or most people need, then this is definitely worth looking at. Okay, so there you have it. That is our multi-tester take on the Garmin 4165. Now, don't worry, we definitely have got some watch comparison videos on the way, so keep a lookout for those. Now, if you've got any questions about the 4165 or any other watches, do let us know in the comments. As always, like and subscribe, hit that little bell to find out about our latest videos, and yeah, we'll see you for the next Run Testers video.